Hey there bosses, I'm excited about today's video because I'm talking about building a strong online personal brand online, okay? So um, before I even get into that, if you search for this particular topic, how to build an online brand, you will find a lot of videos on the topic. And most of the time people start off by saying, pick a niche and build an audience and stay consistent. And actually when I was going to film this video, that was a list I made. <laughs> that was actually the list I made. It's right here. The list I made on these posts to discuss with you. But then I was thinking about it and I was like, okay, let me just, I'm going to talk about these, but let me also just talk off the cuff and just talk to you about building a personal brand that is authentic right so the thing is that whether you like it or not or whether you acknowledge it or not you have been building a personal brand all this while you may not know it but you have been you may not have called it that but you have been and so your personal brand at the basis of it is your reputation and the better your reputation gets the more likely especially in this world of business the more likely you are to attract more clients to attract more speaking engagements to attract more affiliate sales to attract more business right so building a personal brand is great for your business and as a freelance writer right and a lot of you that watch me are freelance writers or as some kind of freelancer, building your personal brand is absolutely important because here's the thing, people have a choice to, you know, ship their freelancing overseas or they have a choice to choose a cheaper freelancer. And so what is really going to set you apart from the pack and what is going to help you get paid the rates you want to get paid is the personal brand you build. All right. And so if you are, uh, uh, you know, want to build a free freelance business that becomes successful, I want you to think of this question, like, how do I want to be known? What do I want my reputation to be? Do I want my reputation to be this no nonsense kind of person do I want my reputation to be inviting and real and soft like what do you want your reputation to be and for me one of the things that has really helped me build my personal brand and to be honest I'm still building my personal brand online I don't have a huge huge audience but that's okay too because how you treat the few people that you have currently is how you're gonna treat the people when you have a million followers to be honest I feel like a lot of us get hung up on vanity metrics um you know oh i only have a thousand followers oh i have ten thousand oh i have a hundred but at the end of the day right it doesn't matter whether you have a hundred or you have a hundred thousand it's all about whether you value the people or not i can assure you that if you are treating even if you are at 100k and you're treating people badly and not nicely <laughs> that eventually you know it's going to spread around that you have this bad reputation it may resonate with certain people but you're going to kind of get that vibe and if that's the vibe you're going for okay fair, fair enough but if it, that is not the vibe you're going for then that can destroy your brand so I will say that think very very carefully about the kind of brand you want to put out there and most importantly let it be real for me one of the things I had in mind or one of the core values I had when I was starting online was when people met me I wanted them to feel like I was no different than I am on camera or when they hear me on a podcast or when they, they see me on, on, on their Instagram feed. I didn't want it to be any different. And thankfully, I've met people in real life who have followed me online who have said, oh, gee, you are the same person you are on video as I see right now. And for me, that meant a lot to me because when I started building this, I really wanted to come off as real and authentic and not manufactured at all. So it really means a lot to me to come off as real, right? So that's really important to me. It's also important to me to come off as your friend or sister next door. Okay, that's also important to me, right? I don't want to come off as the expert sitting at the top who knows everything and everybody else is beneath it, right? 
I think there's a place for that kind of brand, but that never really was the brand I was building. The brand that I always wanted to build was the kind where I may have been a few steps ahead and it's kind of like I'm looking back and telling my friend or my sister that, hey, this is how I'm doing it, so this is how you can do it too. So that is the kind of brand I have tried to build. And thankfully, I've gotten feedback from people that let me know that um, they appreciate it and that they do feel uh, welcomed and they do feel like I'm not like somebody up here trying to look down on everybody. So that is the kind of brand I've wanted to build for myself. And thankfully, that is a brand that I'm building. Now, let's talk about what you really need to build your brand once you've decided what your core values are and how you want to be known. Of course, picking an edge is right at the top there or picking a focus is right at the top there. And I will add that in picking a niche or picking a focus, do not be afraid at some point to rebrand. I think it's easy to get caught up in oh, you know, I've been doing this for a long time and people know me as this. What's going to happen if I change directions? It's okay to change directions. If six years from now, five years from now, I'm not, I'm no longer doing freelance writing and that is not my major focus in life, I'll, I'll rebrand, right? Because I expect that as long as I live, I'm going to be creating content online. So if five years from now, I'm not actively freelance writing, but I'm doing something else, then I'm, I'm going to change directions, right? And it's okay because you're going to lose a, a few people along the way. It is just fine because they may have even moved on and a completely different audience will find you. But it's important for you to pick a niche or focus. And the reason that is important is this. When people follow you online, they are most likely following you online for a specific purpose. Maybe some of you found my videos that I did on freelancing or videos I've done on social media, like uh, so becoming a social media manager or video a video I did on Instagram stories has become really popular recently. And so... Maybe you found me for that. So you, you know I kind of talk about online business and building a brand online and building a lifestyle business. If all of a sudden one day I show up on this channel and I start talking about politics, it's going to confuse a whole bunch of you because that's not the premise of this channel, right? And so what picking a focus or a niche does for you is that it attracts the right people to you. If today you're talking about politics, tomorrow you're talking about baby diapers, the next day you're talking about freelancing, the next day, I mean, unless you have a variety channel, that helps nobody and you're not going to attract the right people into your audience. Another thing that happens when you don't pick a focus or a niche is that your, well, your message becomes confused, which I talked about earlier, but then you also don't know what to offer people for sale, right? Because I believe that your personal brand or your online brand needs to be tied to a business objective. It shouldn't just be that you are building a, an online brand just to build an online brand. At least in my mind, you should tie it to a business objective, right? Whether that is making affiliate sales, um, making money off of YouTube AdSense, which is not fully a business strategy, but it can be a good money-making strategy. Um, whether that's getting freelance clients, whether that's getting paid speaking engagements, I believe that your personal brand needs to be tied to some business objective. So then if your message is mixed and all over the place, then that business objective becomes confused because first of all, you're not attracting the right people to you. So when it comes time for you to make an offer to make some sales or to get clients, People are not sure who you are, so they don't know what, how to support you. So I think that it helps in, in multiple ways. It helps to attract the right audience to you, and also it helps you to clarify your business objectives. So on the topic of having a business objective, that's the next part of this whole equation, right? I believe that you should have a business objective attached to your online brand because you can't just be out here creating content, another thing I'm gonna talk about, creating all this content and then making no money because of it. Trust me, I have been there. Ask me how I know. I've been there, okay? And and it's frustrating to put out all this content year after year and then not make any money from it. So have a business objective. And I think that if you are just starting out, okay, there can be two major things you can do as a business objective. There are multiple things, but for me, these two have worked the, the best. 
the first one is freelancing, which I've done. The second one is affiliate sales. Okay. Affiliate marketing with affiliate marketing. You don't have to create your own products. You just have to recommend products that you love and enjoy. There are people that are always looking for reviews are always looking for recommendations on a particular product. And where do they go? They go on Google and they search. Google owns YouTube, right? YouTube is owned by Google. And so if you make YouTube videos or if you create a blog post or even you create a podcast about that, even if you create any kind of content on Instagram or Facebook around that subject, you could have people clicking through your affiliate link and then you make money that way. Freelancing is another powerful way has really worked for me. Building your online brand and advertising your services as a photographer, as a writer, as a web designer, as whatever it is that you wish to be known as. So whatever you do, don't start building an online brand without knowing how am I going to monetize this? Now, of course, if you're creating videos on YouTube, there is that, you know, inbuilt monetization process where you can make money from Google AdSense, which I think is fantastic. By the way, I haven't achieved monetization status yet. So please watch more of my videos so that I can increase my watch time. Okay. When you're done watching this video, please go watch another video of mine that you find interesting. It helps to get, help me get there. But you know, even without YouTube monetization, you should be still making some money from other avenues and some of those avenues are affiliate marketing freelancing selling your own digital products speaking um, doing brand collaborations all of those things can bring money into your business so I really think you should think deeply about that before you start creating content and then of course there's the content creation piece of this whole equation too now I did a video talking about how to create a content calendar that I think you should check out it goes into more detail on how I come up with my ideas and then put that in a calendar. You should create a content calendar or at the very least create a list of content ideas so that on the days when you don't even know what to create, you can go to that list and look at that. You know, if you want me to create a detailed video on how I come up with my YouTube video ideas, let me know in the comments below because I'll hook you up. <laughs> so creating content is really important because what it does is that it attracts people into your ecosystem, right? Consider your ecosystem to be, first of all, your content at the top and then at the second level is you nurturing the people, right? They get to know you through other pieces of your content. So they'll find one piece of your content, then they'll watch other pieces of your content or listen to other pieces of your content or read other pieces of your content. And then the next level, maybe you get them on an email list, right? That's important. And so I use active campaign for that. Once you get them on an email list, then you nurture them on the email list and then you make offers, right? So the offers could be your digital products. This offers could be your affiliate products and so on and so forth. So that's the ecosystem I'm talking about. I'm going to recommend um, the Vanessa Marie's video that she did on that kind of funnel. Usually it's called a funnel in marketing. Go check out that video. Really, really helpful, really useful on building that type of ecosystem. But content is what allows you to do that, right? That you can also do that with other methods. You can do that with paid ads. Um, but one of the freest and most common ways to do it is just to create content, whether that's through YouTube, Instagram, podcasting, blogging, and invite people into your ecosystem. And then of course, it's important to be consistent, building a content calendar, building a content list that ends up being really, really important. But at the end of the day, building your personal brand is all about reputation, right? And so when doing all of these things, be really mindful of your core values of what you're putting out there, of how you want to be seen and how you want to be known of what your business is so that the right people can support you. If you have all these things in place, you will find that you build a, an online brand, not just online, but also an offline brand that is really, really consistent and attractive to the kind of people you want to attract into your business. And then the, 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 this part of it, which I'm going to discuss is your brand building offline, right? When nobody is watching, when nobody sees it, when people DM you, when people email you, how do you respond? I know that we cannot respond to all the DMS and all the emails in the world. People have sometimes asked me for my phone number to call me. Unfortunately, I can't give that out, but as much as possible, you still need to represent your brand 
in the right way even when nobody is watching because it is those private conversations that ultimately build you a long-term brand and so if people dm you and you are nasty to them in the dms eventually that's going to get out don't think that because it's a dm nobody's going to see that people are going to see that be respectful sometimes you have to you know show people boundaries and tell them no i can't give you your number or not respond to certain emails but as much as possible you should be respectful of your brand of of people because people ultimately are the ones who are going to pay you whether anybody is watching or not here are some more videos on building an online business that feeds your lifestyle